Today, we're gonna be focusing on a lot of aspects, teamwork, rotation, how to chow, when to chow, when not to chow, and the list goes on. I want you guys to be a lot more confident in this game so that you can actually pick fights. A lot of people, when they first load into this game, they just want to get wins on the new map. When in reality, you'll need to be moving around, learn the map. That way, if you get in a fight, you know how to get in and out of cover efficiently and how to rotate on enemies. But here we are. We've already got Vegas down right now. Now, speaking of teamwork, we are split up. So in this map, you don't have to play it as a squad. If you guys are comfortable with gunning, I encourage you guys to go out there and try to win fights on your own. The more you guys put yourself in uncomfortable positions, 1v2, 1v3, 1v4, the faster you guys will become. You'll get shit on at first, but eventually less, less, and less. And then all of a sudden you turn into an absolute demon. But talking about this fight here, assuming you guys are not comfortable with gunning, you want to play somewhat together. I'm not saying lock it in, hold hands and sit in four corners. What I'm saying is if one of your teammate goes down, hopefully you're close enough to get the knock on the enemy that downed them and maybe finish the fight. Now, right now is a good time to keep practicing in this mode because everyone's still trying to figure out the map. There's a lot of players that haven't played Rebirth before in their entire lives. So take advantage of the fact that a lot of people are out here trying to learn. Get out there, get aggressive, practice your gunning. So we have gunshots up here. We saw it on the mini map, literally right, boom, right? He's probably on the rooftop, but that's what encouraged these guys to go up. But as we go around the corner, we see player number one just sitting here and honestly, good beams. I wish he would have used his other weapon, to be honest. I'm assuming he's got an AR. There it is. Now, granted, he's coming upstairs. He wasn't anticipating enemy being at range, but again, when you see him, you have to switch and try to get some shots off. So now we have Pink going up the left-hand side and we're going up this way. There's a good chance we could pinch him, but I'm thinking if the enemy's smart, he's gonna bail back and go to his team. Perky's doing a really good job of being aware, checking everything around him. Listening for audio right now, enemy to the left. Good shot, predicting the breakaway through the window. All right, that was honestly a good fight all in all from uh, from everybody, to be fair. Now, the enemy stood no chance. He was kind of he was kind of fucked. So we spot the enemy right here. We get the drops on him. It was a good snap to him. So the enemy can either break through the window or go to the right. This is just a simple read. There's nothing even crazy about this. He clearly didn't go to the window. He ran to the right-hand side. So instead of chasing him through the doorway that we just saw him go through, don't do that. Try to cut him off. And that's what he tries to do. He jumps through this doorway instead, sees the enemy, tries to get the shot off, and then collapses. Now, the third thing I liked about this fight was the fact that Pink, again, we saw them going down the aisles together. And even in this fight, they ended up flanking. That way, if this enemy decides to run or what, that way, if the enemy decides to keep running, Pink's there to follow up, deliver the kill. So honestly, just good teamwork overall. And I can't really critique much from the enemy. He was just kind of, he's by himself. He tried to make a break for it. And he just got caught. He has got pinched, to be fair. Now, normally, this is where I say, don't loot stop looting plates and ammo are not abundant you want you want to make sure you're you're looted up ready to go now this is something i have been preaching since day one of warzone and for some reason players still do it i know i'm not the biggest youtuber in the world but at some point just how much common sense do you, does a player need not to do this look this is resurgence it's a small map right if you are at a certain altitude you need to pull your parachute once you break light, you see the top of this tower right here? Once you break that plane, you never want to be in your parachute. You want to drop all the way to the earth and then pull up the very last second. This is crazy. This is beamable. One, you have to worry about people in tower. Two, you have all of prison rooftop. And three, anyone in the map on the ground level can kill your ass. I get most of my kills. I'll post my gameplay here uh, probably this week. But I get most of my kills literally from beaming people in the sky. Make it harder for us to kill you. I get you want to float around and see where you want to go, but pull your parachute when you instantly respawn. When you when resurgence activates, you come back from heaven, instantly pull your parachute and figure it out, and then drop to where you want to go, hit your shoot at the last second, and move on. I know that's like really in depth for that, but I see this shit. So I probably got 300 kills the first day Rebirth came out, literally from doing that. <sighs> Too easy. <laughs> Too easy. Do we do we need to, do we need to have a tips and trick for that one? I don't think so. Now, look, we have a lot of fights going on around us, but we have a guy at tents, clearly in a fight. We have these guys clearly in a fight. If you're trying to get active, if you're trying to practice your gunning, you want to take these fights. Again, if your gunplay is shit and your KD's not where you want it and you're not winning games efficiently, go pick these fights. The only way you will get better is by getting active with it. Now watch, they're gonna crack him, he's probably gonna jump. Damn it, Perky, you're letting me down, brother. Damn it, no, Perky, go get active. All right, so right now, I'm not sure what Perky's doing, but green and pink look like they're about to get active with this building here. I definitely anticipate Perky to go help out. Now, this is dangerous. I want you guys to notice where we're at. We're in the middle of the street and we're running parallel with the street and the wall, right? We're running with it. We have a rooftop right here, enemies to shoot us from. We have tower, even though we just cleared it, there can still be a guy falling in. 
we're pretty vulnerable up here. And the last thing I want to do is see people picking fights from this area. If you do pick a fight, don't stay up here too long. Win your fight fast. But again, being out here in general, it's crazy. On both these teams, it's kind of wild, to be honest. Now, I like the fact Perky came up from another angle. We talk about this a lot. Even though Perky didn't follow them, he ended up regrouping with them from a whole other angle. So these guys are all focused on us. Green and pink. But yellow, because he's at a different angle, because he's not holding hands, but he's playing together. Massive difference. He's able to put shots on the enemies, and they had no idea he was even there. Also, I want to rewind. Pay attention to skins. And Cosmo does this, right? Cosmo starts shooting Diamond Bitch right in the face. Or shooting at him. Then Dick Farm Dunn runs out in the open and Dolphin dives because that's going to save your life. And he shoots him. But Cosmo remembered Diamond Bitch. So what's he do? He doesn't go for the execute. Uh, hand clap. I mean, Cosmo's doing his shit. And he's keeping his reticle, his little dot on his monitor. He's keeping it where the enemy is. So if the enemy reach house, he can get shots off. He's moving towards the res while keeping that little dot right on the enemy's location. Now, I don't like the fact we're up here, clearly because of the fight's going on over here. That's not surprising they got hit and cracked. But... Still a good play nonetheless. And again, no player's gonna be perfect. I could probably break down a pro player and, and critique his gameplay, especially mine. Everyone's got their thing, but he did three out of the four things correct. You gotta give him a hand clap for that. Now, again, we've stayed here too long. We've almost already paid the price. I wanna get off of this hill. Green and yellow go ahead in. Cosmo kinda a little, little lagging behind, but you wanna join him. Remember, there's two, there's two teams here for sure. And you want to push these fights together. Cosmo's out here just kind of getting distracted. His teammates are inside. Green's in it right now. Yellow's going to go help him out finally. But Cosmo's a lot really delayed to that fight. I'm not sure. It seems like he might be a little unconfident with his gameplay. Decision making so far, I think, is good at least mid fight. So I you think he's being too hard on himself. Again, very distracted from Cosmo. We just gave him a huge hand clap. And now he's kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of throwing. Two teammates going down. We see the enemy. He sees it too. Again, observation. I mean, dude, Cosmo has anything. It's observation. You got to give him credit. There's a lot of people with great gunny that had terrible observation. He's the opposite. Now, are we going to show you yeah. No need to mount with the Holger. In situations like this, look, dude, you're vulnerable from everything. 360 degrees of getting fucked up. This dude's laying prone. Just pull the trigger and pull down on your stick. Look, when you pull the trigger, you don't just let go of your stick. You slightly pull down to compensate for recoil. And that's all you need to do. I know it didn't seem like a big deal. There's two seconds between him spotting the enemy, lining up with him, and then finally pulling his trigger. Why? Because he wanted to mount. Those two seconds, he could be dead. TTK is way too fast. You do not want to waste the time. Just take the shot. Nonetheless, though, good job collapsing, I guess. I think it was an accidental collapse. I'm really not sure what Cosmo was doing, per se. We are being pushed. We need to bail from it. So the moment we heard the footsteps, we should have bailed. I'm gonna try to buff the audio for you guys. Right here. That was a, I, I heard, now I know he's pushing, right? Look at the revive bar. We commit to halfway and then we pull out. Again, milliseconds, you're like, that's not a big deal. That That's a huge deal, bro. The moment you hear his footsteps, you bust out of the building, you reposition, you go upstairs, you reposition, you play your life, let your teammate die. I'm all for sticking with my teammates trying to get the res off, but we don't have smokes. We, we're not even played it up. This is not a fight you want to take. This is not a risk you want to make. Because all in all, your boy gets double kill anyway, comes back in, executes, GG. Rebirth Island was actually the first time I ever decided to buy a controller with paddles. Why? Because when I was playing Rebirth during blackout days, it was hard to keep my fingers on here while popping plates and reloading and doing the things I needed to do in order to survive. But because of paddles, I'm able to keep my fingers on here while I'm running away from enemies or repositioning. And I can plate, slide, jump, YY, whatever I need to do just by simply doing that. So check out Aim Controls today, guys. Use code SAVAGE at checkout for up to 30% off your order. Massive savings, boys. Link in the description as well as the pinned comment. Now, Yellow's going back to the Lodi right near where his teammate died. Him, he's going in at the tents. I love fighting tents, bro. This is my favorite spot. If they made a Warzone map with nothing but this terrain and tents, I would be in fucking heaven. All right, next tip we're gonna talk about confusing the enemy, right? When you guys are in a fight, you don't wanna just make the fight basic. People make the fight basic because either they don't know how to complicate it or they're too lazy or they're afraid to make a different play. So Perky spots the enemy. He can shoot him, but they both back off. Both players pretty competent. You don't wanna take that fight because again, you have no cover, no concealment. You're already out in the open, play it. So Perky right now is just being patient. The enemy instantly reach out. He, he predicted that and he's baiting it. Now he's just listening for footsteps and he's gonna make his play off the enemy's footsteps. 
He's going to change his angle completely and not go through the basic door angle. He's going to change it all around. Because again, the enemy read that. Just whatever seems like the simplest play, don't ever fucking do it. So now we have the enemy to the left hand side. He spots it, continues running, re challenges. So this is the bait and switch, straight up. The enemy sees this one right. We predict that. We could go ahead and challenge him. We could even hold the angle, but he makes the better play. The enemy goes and follows our last known trajectory, and now I shoot him in the back. Oh, you trying to pull it out of you, big dog. And honestly, great fight nonetheless. And again, when you guys are fighting like that in the open, you don't have to do all that. You have no cover to work with. I get that. But inside of a building, as long as there's not a lot of footsteps coming towards you and you just have to win fast, most of the fights, you guys need to play buildings. You're going to be in a bad spot. You're going to get third party and get shot from another area while you're fighting. You need to learn to play buildings effectively. Don't just run in the door and make a basic fight. You want to complicate the fuck out of it. Try to extend your life and extend the play, but win the fight fast. I know it sounds weird. I know it kind of contradicts itself, but again, it's just the best way to win your gunfights because most players are going to bring... <laughs> Demon. Most players will predict the basic ones. Most players have basic common sense to where if you sit still, all they gotta do is point and shoot. But players out here like this that are navigating around buildings efficiently, those are the ones that are breaking your cameras, that you're accusing of cheating. It's those guys out there that you need to worry about. And those are the guys I want you to become. Next tip, pay attention to mini map. I know it seems basic, but so many people I play against and I spectate, don't ever look at it, dude. So much information, unsuppressed weapons, you kill an enemy, his teammates ping out, um, and also UAVs. I'm gonna rewind a little bit, but we come over here because they have a UAV up. So him, he's just following UAVs. And I say, I say again, pay attention to mini-map, buy UAVs, even buy portable radars, whatever you guys need. Just buy tools to help make your job easier. At the end of the day, your goal in this game is to make your job easier and the enemy's job harder. Using tools, using movement, those are the best two ways to uh, confuse the enemies and make their life a living hell. All right, this right here is pretty basic. We're not gonna stop it and make it a whole new tip, but you wanna pay attention not just to your mini map, but everything going around you. Observation is key. If you see a flare, if you see a buyback, things like that, make sure you guys are pushing the fight if you can do so efficiently. We have the high ground, we're looking for the enemy, we see him, now all we have to do is jump down on this man and chase, but he doesn't chase. Oh, get shit on! <laughs> Angles is important. Angles is everything. And the next tip after this is talking about angles as well, but from a different perspective. So the enemy is sitting right here. He knows we're coming for whatever reason. I'm guessing we were on the rooftop. He heard us and he panicked. But the moment he knows we're coming up behind him, which he clearly does, he heard us, he needs to play outside. And you might be like, well, Savage, I don't want to play behind the door because I might get shot from the rooftop. Well, you might, but it's safer than this stupid shit. So right now, I mean, he's got no cover, no concealment. If he wants to bail away, he's got to turn his back to the enemy. And again, TTK is fast. By the time we do this, we're dead. The enemy has a drop on us. He has us almost cracked. But this is where weapons and aim come to play, right? Your boy has got a very, very good build. Now, I don't know what happened to your boy that we just downed. I don't know how he went from having us cracked to a little bit of below half health. Oh wait, yeah, I do. When you guys are looking at meta builds and all this stuff, you're like, how am I getting out shot? It's not always about the gun. It's not always about the build. There's a special thing no one really thinks of, rounds per second. This gun will shoot a whole mag into you in like two seconds. So we're putting more bullets into the enemy than he's pulling into us. It sure as fuck saved him. I guarantee if you had the Ram or any other gun people are using, he probably would've got out shot. Not because it's the worst weapon, just worse in that situation. The beautiful thing about Warzone and Battle Royales is some guns are ass, but most of them are very usable. You have to use metas for you and your play style. So many YouTubers are posting meta build, meta build, and they're right. But what you're not taking into account, again, that fight we just got into as well, fucking melted. I'm also gonna be putting out a video here soon talking about different perk packages and equipment that players should use based off your play style. It's something players don't talk about. I talk about it all on stream all the time, but we really don't see much conversation about it. Um, you guys are just using perk packages that your friends are using, you just feel like using, and maybe a YouTuber's using, when in reality, a lot of you guys are probably using perk packages that are good. Just again, not for your play style. But that video will come out next week. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that. All right, so right now, this is a simple play. We talk about this all the time. So we are kind of vulnerable. Rooftop can shoot us. We're, we're, this isn't cover, but we can jump down left to right. This is not a bad spot to be in. I don't want to be here too long, but it's not a bad spot. But I like the fact we left the rooftop to come by, and we're also scanning. Most people go to the buy station and run off, right? But we're in a spot where we can gatekeep a lot of people. We can gatekeep people on the rooftop, people in this building, and also people coming up. So, I mean, there's a good spot. You don't want to stay here too long. Just quickly scan, maybe like five, maybe 10 seconds, and then just dip. I don't expect them to be here too long. You're basically listening for movement, listening for gunshots, looking at the mini map, looking for 
anything you can to give you sign and nice fire sale that's beautiful timing uav yep all right so we got the uav and we're pushing the fight now there is a spectator glitch so we can't see the uav pings most of the time sometimes we can sometimes we can't now look we're moving out of cover i don't like this play you want to be aggressive i get it but zone is moving in in 50 seconds and if we push in here and we kill this team by the time we have to leave there could be someone gatekeeping us remember you're very rarely the best player in the lobby and you always want to be aware of the players that are in there that are just as good as you or as good as you and if you're doing a play there's good chance there's another team doing that same play so i don't like this and we're vulnerable as shit. we're out in the open he has the uav but there's still ghosted players so it's kind of <laughs> hey hey there it is uh we have perky sitting here sniping at range now we talked about angles Here's another tip when it comes to angles, completely separate because this is because this is involving snipers. So snipers out there, pay attention. Now look, you have to look at the map. You have to look at the terrain. You have to judge angles. So right now we're sitting right here. We have a lot of shit in our way. This looks like, uh, what was it? Billy Madison? Not Billy Madison. What's the one with the golf? Happy Gilmore, right? When he has to hit the golf ball through the broken tower, it's too much. We got to shoot through a tower. It's too much. So what I want to do in this situation is change my angle. We're already on the rooftop. So just go over here. If you play this side of the building right here, you have perfect line of sight on this team and maybe even other teams. Again, going back to gatekeeping position, just like your boy Hemi was doing, we can get in that kind of same setup. You don't want to push off the roof. I don't want to get too close, but rooftop's going to be a great angle. It's going to be way better than this shit here. So I don't like where we're at. You put yourself in a better spot defensively and offensively. I just don't, I don't like where we're at right now at all. And he, he's, he's, he's slowly getting to, I mean, he, at least he's realizing he might not have had it right off the bat, but he's analyzing shit. It's a bad spot. Moves closer. Shit. It's a bad spot. Moves closer, closer. Precision coming in. Green's going right to it. Oh my God. Yeah. Gee, I mean, and look, Rebirth is a wild map. So I will, I, I promise you, I'm gonna try my best never to troll somebody for running into a precision. I did it yesterday. But if you're actually playing the game, you're in so much action in Rebirth that there's a good chance your mid gunfight, just like Vegas was, I'm pretty sure his mid gunfight when that precision came up. No, he wasn't, but hey, fuck it. I respect it. I respect it. He's ran right now. He said, fuck you. Now, that's what I was talking about. I don't really want to push up. I know our teammates are down, but they're down. They are down. There's no reason for Perky to be jumping off the roof right here. Hold your position. I, I said it earlier. Now. I don't want to get closer to this fight. There's no need to. Teammates come back in 44 seconds. All we got to do is hold. Him, he's probably going to die. I don't know. They have to win this fight. Very nice. Nice follow-up. And again, Perky's good. I'm not hating him at all. 10 kills. He's a good player. But you never know the rest of the story. Your team's in a fight, their comms going out, but I promise you it's not perfect comms. And just like how Hemi died, fighting one guy, getting shot in the side, that's exactly what happened to Perky. You need to play position. We're getting mid in game. This is when you want to kind of slow it down a little bit. Still stay aggressive, but in fights like this, when they have to come to you, just chill. I said, I don't think Hemi's gonna live. And honestly, he might not. There's an enemy back here and the guy that just killed Green. So there's two players. Let's see what Hemi gets into. He has to make a bail for it. Luckily, his teammates came back just in time, but yeah, that's, that's no surprise at all. Now, Cosmo needs to go to the loadout. I wouldn't, don't go to the rooftop. Don't go on the fight. Same thing with Vegas. Go to the, go to, go to Lodi. Hemi. I'm not, I'm sorry. Not Hemi. Vegas. Vegas, go to loadout. And that leads me to your next tip. Don't be afraid to go for loadout. You need your loadout, especially mid and end game. You need your loadout. If the loadout instantly drops, I would do everything in my power to make it there quick. Because if you're one of the first teams to the loadout when it drops, there's a good chance other teams are gonna be going theirs as well. And they're not gonna be camping yours. Also on top of that, when you are diving on your loadout, make sure you're at least looking around. If it's clearly just clustered with enemies, don't go. But at least open your eyes, go over there, look, and then make the decision. I don't want you dying for it, but definitely make an attempt for it. Now, ooh, I was just about to talk about this. So we're sitting here. Let's go back, because I did not know he was gonna peep. Next tip, guys, play covering concealment no matter what, even when you're holding an angle. We talked about with angle, but I'm gonna go in more depth right here. So we're in a position where we're watching this. I'm not sure exactly why Cosmo is watching this. We have no UAVs. He just got here. We have this to worry about, this to worry about, this to worry about, this to worry about. There's a lot going on. I'm not sure why he's looking here. I don't know, is it COD timing or he's doing the thing? I don't know, but um, he is. We have no cover. This is the biggest problem. I don't care if he had a sniper rifle. I don't care if he has an AR. We have no cover at all. This is not where you want to be sitting. It's not. Look, look, at, look at this guy right here. Let's go back a little bit. Do you see this? He sees our entire body from the top of our head to the base of our dick. He sees it all. What do we see? A little ant. We see a little bitty head. That's it. And he does step over a little bit, letting us see him from the crotch up. That's it. So when you sit here like this, you put yourself in a bad spot. It's just not a smart decision. I'm hit. All right, he goes down. I'm hit. Yeah, no shit. You're out in the open. All right, here we are on the Hemi. Just switching back and forth. All right, there are three enemies here, guys. 
leading me to another tip. Guys, do not challenge a team who's stacked, right? You want to try to like practice 1v2s, 1v3s, 1v4s, but the goal is to try to split them by confusing them or just catching them out. When they're stacked like that, and if Cosmo didn't calm that, that's bad on him. That'll bring me to another tip of teamwork, but we'll just throw it in with this one. He needs to calm that there are three enemies there, and I'm assuming him he knows, judging by the amount of gunfire he heard his boy get mowed down by, but this is crazy, and I think he's gonna do it. I think he's gonna do it. A glint, glint, let's die now! All right, great breakaway. And that's what he needs to do. Don't challenge that shit. Perky's up top fighting it right now. He needs to bail off. All right, Perky's on the rooftop fighting. His plates are slowly getting disintegrated. Let's see how far it gets. Okay, he goes down. All right, so Perky's in a gunfight. He's on the rooftop. He's got the levers. He's got the angle. I don't know if he has a self-res, but even if you have a self-res, don't waste it. If your plates get broken, instantly jump off the ledge. I, I know exactly what play he's doing. He's on the ledge. He's playing by the AC unit. Jump back. Plate up. Reach out. Do not commit. You have two enemies shooting at you actively. There's a third there somewhere, but you have two actively shooting at you. You're going to get outgunned. You're going to get outgunned. Now, him needs to go up for the res. Uh, Cosmo is actually floating there. Okay, dude. Look, look. Guys. Guys, another tip. Do not ego. Don't do it. Just don't. 15 kills. Him is a good player. Is he the best? Eh, questionable, but he's a good player. No doubt about it. This is a psychotic push. Your boy just got down on the rooftop. Even though your teammate's landing on them, maybe we should reconvene. It's getting in game. I want to. I want to see you guys start playing together a little bit better. Otherwise, you're gonna end up losing the game. There's the third. Didn't matter, but there's the third. And look, look at that. All three of them, the same frame. That's crazy. And it's a whole other team. That wasn't the third. That was a whole other squad. All right, so now we're down to Cosmo. Your boy, Perky, rage quit. I don't blame him, honestly. I really don't. Hemi might do the same. But Vegas needs to make a play for the buy. So right now, Vegas is on ground level. So are we. We need to make a play for the buy and try to get our carry back. I don't care who you are, bro. If you've got three kills, two kills, get your team carry back. All right, so I respect him trying to sidestep. So when he sidestep, and I'm assuming he's trying to abuse aim assist, but he keeps doing it into the wall. And when you do that, most walls are going to break your aim assist. So if you're going to sidestep, kind of kind of stay in the open a little bit. Play the corner, but stay near the corner. Now we break away, and instead of going with our teammate who seems to be trying to go up the rooftop, maybe. Okay, this is, yeah, that's crazy. I was about to say that's crazy anyway. We don't know who's on the rooftop. It's in game. There's only three teams left, but there's probably a team on the roof and we're going by ourselves. I don't like that ladder for that reason there, but also for the fact that it's easy to camp and Claymore's one tap now, so I don't want to climb up there and get hit by a clay. I'd rather go to Vegas, go up the staircase. It's a way safer play, way smarter play. All right, they are pushing. They are pushing. There it is, there it is. All right, so that's the second time we saw a teammate die trying to get the res off. I respect it. I get it. But look how much money Vegas had. Yeah, if he goes to buy, he might die. But he's definitely going to die doing this play. So another tip, guys. Play your money. Play your life. I originally wanted this team to play through here, right, this building, and go out this window right here and go to the buy and get Hemi back. Now we have a trio. But instead, they dicked off. Why? Because they didn't plan for that. They weren't thinking to go for the res. They never thought about going for the res. Vegas was really down here just going in circles, finger banging himself. And Cosmo's out here, I don't know, trying to get the high ground, which I kind of respect. But again, just there's better ways to do that. But you have to play the buy. There's no reason not to. I don't have a savage only shot from the building. Uh, who, get, who cares? We have gas grenades. You can gas the window. You can lay cover fire. You can sneak it. There's only three teams up. That's it. Three teams, three buys. I mean, go to one of them. I um, mean, that honestly was a great push from them. I wish they would have done it a little bit faster because if your boy, if Vegas would have been holding the angle, he might have been able to catch him. But it was still a good push on the last. And JD Rocket third. Holy, yeah. now look at that. Guys, this is a tip we were talking about earlier. Know when to break away. He comes around the corner, ready to fight. Says, oh, fuck that. This is the rebirth stack from hell. And before anyone's like, Savage, don't be bitching about stacking. I'm not bitching about stacking. I'm not. I want you guys to play together, but this right here is stupid. Why is this dumb? My like, Savage, you're salty. No, this is stupid. We talked earlier in the fight how your boy Hemi went around the whole other angle. They were playing together. They were just different angles, right? We all know now where all four of them are at. If two of them would have been down this hallway, then by the time JD Kush bailed away, guess what? They could be watching right here. Stacking might help you guys. You might get some wins. You'll probably get a, a, a decent amount of wins from stacking, but you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because if your team dies, then what do you do? 
I guarantee you most stackers right now, and you guys that are watching probably can attest to this, most of you that are stacking, when your team dies, you panic. I mean, we all panic when we're by ourselves, but you definitely panic because you don't have the, you don't have the team beams to work with. And I'm not saying I don't want you guys to play together, but again, there's a difference between stacking and playing together. But JD Kush does a great job getting away and changing his angle. And again, dude, look. Now look, two of our teammates are dead, right? They just team beamed him. We broke away. I don't know what our team was doing. They decided, fuck it, we're gonna fuck it out. I like the fact we're trying to come up from behind the enemies and catch them out. Now this guy might seem like, oh, he's predicting it, Savage. He's smart, maybe, but he's plating up. Nobody that's predicting a push from here is going to be plating and running straight, straight towards you at all. So JD Kush probably going to annihilate him. But the tech evolver at close range too. Oh! Oh no, I was about to troll the shit out of him. Okay, I don't know what just happened. And they died. Fuck. Okay, so let's go back real quick. I know, guys. I know. You want to get the kill. You don't want to res and have to 1v4 again. I get it. But you have to play your life. You know that his team is over there. Damn near close. And they might be closer than you think, which clearly they were. Your team's dead. You have no plates. You almost half health. He's down. Just let him live. Go back. Play it up. This is where you're already turned around. You're already rounding the wall that you're about to do. So you're, you should already be around here plating up. You should already have one plate in and getting ready to reset for the next fight. Maybe change your angle and go back around the original way and shoot him in the back on the gun for the res. There's a lot of ways to fight this. Will it 100% work? Who knows? But you're never going to know if you just go for the execute. So guys, please stop executing enemies when you're pressed. If you're under pressure, don't go for the execute. If you're safe to do so, by all means, fuck him up. But dude, when, no, 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 no. All right, so Mick's still alive, actually. And he's going for the rest. So again, we talked about rest plays. My man's smart. My man's smart. Go for the rest. It's a simple play, most of you guys know. But again, I spectate this game all the time. We don't see this shit. All right, so Shriek almost got clapped by the, uh, by the enemies. Oh, okay, so look, I don't like this. Another tip, guys, don't land in the unknown. This being the unknown. I had a feeling they were up here. There's three teams left. Someone's on the roof. We talked about it the last team. I didn't like the ladder play because guess what? Someone's on the roof. Now, Sheik originally was going to land on the roof, but he bailed off because of precision. Still, do not come to the rooftop. We don't know how many people are here. I thought they'd be in here, to be fair. That's why I paused it. They just happened to run at us anyway. And there's nothing you can do. No matter how good you are, you have to just come to a point where you're like, I want to go where are safe. And yeah, landing on the bottom might not be safe, but it's definitely safe on the fucking rooftop. If the circle is bigger, by all means, go to the roof. It's a big ass rooftop. You can play different angles, different areas and get safe. Can we spectate, please? Next team. <laughs> GG. Team on the roof one. But guys, look, thank y'all for watching. I really hope you learned a lot in this video. We're going to be putting out a lot more rebirth content. One, because it's just my favorite map right now. And two, I'm having the most fun ever. And three, I know a lot of you guys are just starting with rebirth. There's a lot to know. Jump spots, rotations, positioning, what perk packages to use, and the list goes on. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. But until next time, y'all be good. Y'all have a good one. And good luck in Warzone.